I'm Will Knopfsinger with Denison Yachting, here standing aboard a very special listing that I was super excited to get, Motor Yacht Mizu. She's a 174 Ocean Fast built in 2004 with a massive refit in 2016, and I can't wait to show you some of her amazing features. Mizu's original owner built her to incredible specifications. She's capable of transatlantic and transpacific crossings, and has also got a shallow enough draft to get you in most ports throughout the Bahamas. Her exterior profile is unmistakable, and her battleship looks are absolutely terrifying to the seas. When you step inside, you're walking into a five-star hotel that looks just like what you're seeing behind me now. One of the most common questions I get aboard this vessel is what is Mizu? Mizu is a word in Japanese that means water, and the current owner feels like it's something that connects everyone. We all need it to survive, and it's where he finds his sanctuary, and I'd like to welcome you aboard. We're going to start today's tour here on the aft deck, an area that's truly special, versatile, and makes this vessel absolutely unique. This vessel is all about design, all about expedition, and capable of taking everything with you, and this deck emphasizes that. Flanking us to port and starboard are massive davits that cost $250,000 a piece, and they're capable of hoisting 5,000 pound tenders and placing them here for long excursions. This wide open space allows for multiple configurations, perfect for having a party or a private concert for your closest friends. Walking all the way aft and down a center line set of stairs takes us to the swim platform. To starboard, we have a watertight engine room access door. Before we reach the engine room, we arrive at a fully air-conditioned engineer's control room. This space is equipped with a monitor for every ship system on board, from cameras and engine data to safety systems. Now let's step into the engine room. When we step in the engine room, the first thing we come to are the Northern Lights generators, coming in at 150 kW each, capable of powering the entire vessel. As we walk forward through the engine room, we come to our M90 engines built by MTU. Each of these bad boys generates 3,750 horsepower. It's worth taking a moment to note the economy of these engines. She has an eco cruise of 13 knots that gives her a formidable range of 4,500 nautical miles. Her standard cruise is 18 knots, but she has a top speed of 28 knots plus. This is amazing considering that she has straight shafts and no other propulsion systems to assist. Rounding out the engine room are a water treatment plant, water makers, and zabilizers with hydraulic systems for both them and the bow and stern thruster. From here, let's take a walk up the aft deck stairs towards the main salon. Here we see what makes this area crowd favorite, a full regulation basketball hoop. Stepping into the salon on the starboard side aft, we have a beautiful wet bar. Her backlit onyx bar top really makes this feature pop. It features a sink as well as an ice maker and fridge. It's just a little tough to show this on camera. Four be fine seating for 10 and a comfortable conversation pit flooded with natural light. All the furniture you see here was custom designed by the current owner specifically for this boat. On the port forward side, we come to an office a convenient space to skip out when duty calls and business needs to get done. There's an auxiliary set of navigation controls here as well. Moving on, we arrived to the foyer on the starboard side. I absolutely love this area. This feature came in at a cost of over a half million dollars. These beautiful hand chisel glass stairs lead down to the guest accommodations or they go up to the master in the Sky Lounge. We'll revisit this area later. Moving forward brings us to Mizu's formal dining room. Here, we have seating for 10 around a large custom table. This space and the rest of the interior is appointed with a beautiful ebony makassar and a Japanese anagray. Just for the dinette, there's a convenient dayhead or washroom on the starboard side. Now on the port side, follow me into the galley. Immediately, we come to the service nook, which is conveniently close to the formal dining. Here we see a sink, 
and a dishwasher. Forward of this is a Miele coffee maker. This brings us to the main section of the galley where we come to the primary appliances. We find a sub-zero wine chiller next to a fridge and above four cold drawers. On the starboard side is a true restaurant style kitchen with appliances by Vulcan. This includes a stove and hood. Beyond this are a pair of Hobart commercial ovens. The port is more stainless steel countertop space, an ice maker, dishwasher, twin sink basins, and trash compactor. All the way forward is a walk-in pantry that provides access to a double walk-in freezer. This is a great feature for chartering and allows the vessel to be provisioned for up to three weeks. Halfway into the galley is what I like to call the service foyer. Forward of this is the captain's quarters, which has its own ensuite. This staircase leads up to the pilot house, but we're gonna go down and take it to the crew area. The crew area on board Mizu is absolutely huge. It features a comfortable crew mess, which is what we see here. To starboard is the laundry station and linen closet. Forward are four crew cabins, each with bunks and ensuite heads, but we can't show this right now because they're currently aboard. Let's head up to the main deck foyer and then down to the guest accommodations. Down here we find four guest accommodations. We're first going to take a look at the aft staterooms known as Norfolk and Charleston. Charleston is on the port side with twin berths, a full closet, and ensuite head. To starboard is Norfolk. The starboard accommodations are slightly smaller than the ones to port we just left. Located in between these two aft staterooms, we have a linen closet. Moving forward in the companionway brings us to the beverage bar. It's perfect for a morning coffee or a nightcap. On the port side, we arrive at the new port stateroom, which has a queen berth, vanity, and again, its own ensuite head. Lastly, we come to Annapolis, located to starboard, with a nearly identical layout to Newport. Located all the way forward is a watertight door that's intentionally concealed for crew access. Having wrapped up the main deck and lower levels, let's check out Mizu's impressive third level. This area is where the owners and guests find themselves most often. In this space, we find the yacht's formal outdoor dining area. It features a custom overhead canopy awning that creates some seriously picturesque moments. Forward into starboard on this deck, we have an L-shaped seating area with hidden pop-up TV behind. Adjacent to this is a beautiful stainless steel staircase these teak steps take you to the sun deck, which we're going to come back to towards the end. Continuing forward brings us to the sky lounge. Aft are oversized chaise loungers. Center line is a huge 90-inch TV. On the port side of the sky lounge is a wet bar, complete with ice maker below. Next, we pass the foyer as we move into the master stateroom. She features a centerline king-size bed, and the first breathtaking views from her massive windows will surely have you imagining yourself waking up to the crystal clear blue waters of the Bahamas. Talk about a room with a view. For the master is a large walk-in closet. And beyond that, a large master bath, yet another space with accommodations of a five-star hotel. From here, let's go take a look at the pilot house. We first come to this space through the captain's office. Continuing forward brings us into the wheelhouse where we find our helm. This space offers a 180 degree view of your surroundings and feels like the command station on a naval destroyer. 
Wrapping around the pilot house is a Portuguese style bridge and a pair of wing stations, giving you the ultimate protection in your transatlantic crossings. This leaves us with the fourth level, an area that we call the sun deck. This impressive space is dominated by a huge jacuzzi and towering custom radar mast. This mast helps give Mizu her formidable profile. Starting aft, we have a huge molded in sun pad. Walking past the hot tub, either to port or starboard, takes us to an outdoor bar. This bar features a sink, sub-zero refrigeration, and an ice maker. Walking further forward, we find ourselves standing beneath that incredible mast arching overhead with a beautifully designed outdoor shower and air-conditioned day head to port. Continuing onward takes us to a very special viewing area complete with a full helm to wrap your guests in incredible luxury as they conquer the seas on board the battleship beneath their feet. Our last stop on today's tour will be the bow. In addition to pointing out her windlasses and ground tackle, it's important to note that Mizu is not only built to look like a destroyer, but also possesses some of the same capabilities. Her hull was built to HSS standards, which stands for High Speed Ship, one of the most rigorous specifications on the water, and one that most yachts can't contend with. On behalf of myself and Dennis and Yachting, I'd like to thank you for joining us aboard this tour on Motor Yacht Mizu. If you have any more questions or you'd like to find out more about her capabilities, you can find me online at Yachtslinger. <laughs>